hackers. But now what they do is they, if you leave your purse, everything there, I won't steal it. I will go in the car, in the boots. I'll live there with you. I'll stay with you. I will learn your habits of what you do. Then I will attack you one go. So that's called advanced resistance. That right? means they live with you. They see your behavior. That's why we develop CSA Plus is we to see the behavior of hackers because hackers won't target and hit you one shot. They will. Be. So be, uh, be actually a CSA Plus, like being an auditor, being an auditor of security, being there to just see all your behavioral analysis. Again, so what APT does, hackers they'll go in, suppose for example, if you download any foreign for any site, sometimes they're key loggers. I mean, nothing is for free, you know? So be careful what you do. I even do have some software there as well, so be careful if you download mine. You know, I, I go into a very anonymous things. Many people do that. I just want to go and see the behavior of people, of you guys who use the computer. So what we do is we plan, we give a girl, we put it in, once we download it, it's there, and then, we exfiltrate, we take all the information, we know which website you go, we know habits, we know what you like to see, and then automatically with that behavior, we could either sell your, your websites or your computer habits to anybody who wants to buy, or we can even wait for a time to come and crack and hack it. But I won't talk about that much now, but there are ways to do that. You'll be saying, but you hack, because now in the, uh, if I know your username and password, in the bank, you have definitely a one-time password, an OTP, which comes in SMS. That's also hackable, but we won't talk about it now. What we learned with APG is we know about threat management, vulnerability management, and we need to do cyber incident report response, which I'm going to show you about that in the ransom way as well. The, the problem is in the enterprise so far, we get so late. Until the target happens, then only we start waking up and then doing the necessary security uh, installations to prevent from further. But what we got to do is we got to do we got to do it now. Very good. At the end, more than just becoming hackers, becoming cyber security analysts has gone up tremendously. You might even if I was a bit younger, I would have moved to the U.S. and done this job. But I guess my age doesn't allow me so far. But if, anybody of you, if any of you are listening, trust me, go for CSA Plus, go for Cybersecurity Analyst. This is what they need. This is what everybody needs. They want you to be there and see the network behavior, see the behavior of everybody going through the internet. That's all of the CSA Plus, Cybersecurity Analyst. So who develops CSA Plus? I said, come as a nonprofit organization. We have all the people, we have all these partners, the best they want. We are a member of LPI as well, RICO, or, you know, government. They say, you know what, we want to have some sort of certification. We want to have some skills for people to see the behavioral analysis. And that's why they developed the certification. Exam CSA Plus, a little bit, if you're going to do 27% on threat management. More details you can get from Team Lee Skills University. I won't go into it. Vulnerability is 26%, 24 and 23 in this, I'm going to show you four hacking tools which will be taught by your uh, professional trainers that Team these universities hires, and um, that can be done in the near future. You can discuss this with them later on. This is and to become a security specialist uh, with IT fundamentals. IT fundamentals are like non-IT to IT. You know nothing about computers. Take IT fundamentals. So don't be scared. Well, I mean, my daughter now is nine years old. I'm letting her take IT fundamental because that is how to go to IT. And then the last network, definitely you need to know network before you do security because you're doing security on network. You're not, you're not doing IT security to prevent birds to come into your house, but you're preventing birds to come into your computer. So you need to know the network behavior before you do security. And then go for a plus. CSP definitely is later on. It's more on business management. Etc. But you definitely need to know CSA Plus before. So if you are new to security pathway, I really recommend Comtia. Not because I'm the country manager, but I started my IT career in Comtia and I did my first certification in DOS in the late 1980s. This is the point. Everybody, everybody's different. So in CSA Plus, we teach 
uh, for performance, I'm going to show it to you now. Uh, SQL map. Uh, I'll start and map. One thing, I'm getting a bit of the A. Oops. Okay. Switch north, I'll show you and map. And I'll log a license as well. So without any further delay, we go and see what I'm going to do right now on Nmap first. Now, Nmap you use for, okay, you are a security analyst, you are a security, you are a hacker or whatever. The first thing you've got to do is see the network behavior. So, Nmap will show you the network behavior. Now, before I go, before I go into Nmap, it's like if you want to go and target any website. So, what I did, I built my VM, I built my own uh, web server. I need Zeus for Atom. I've seen that movie called Real Steel. Uh, robot, so I named it Zeus for Atom.com. The reason I have to ping to find the IP address is I think you can even use NS Lookup, but I did not build any DNS server. So I'm going to use ping or NS Lookup, you will find the IP address. You can see the IP address is showing there. I'll look for you 1016-100-204. Okay? You need to find the IP address to hack is the best way to do it because everything in computer they work by numbers. So what I do now is I use Nmap to a range of IP from 10.16.101 to 2.54. I see which computers are opened wrong and what vulnerabilities are there. So I found my I found my uh, IP address 10.16.102. What I'm going to see who's in that range of 2.54. Which computers are open? Which ports are open? For me, go and some fun. So let's go for it. Let me scan it. Real time. Questions in the meantime, and type it in your thing. I won't be able to see your chat because I'm sharing my screen and right now using my. Oh, before we start, I'm using Kali Linux. Kali Linux is the best way. If you want to be a cybersecurity analyst or a hacker, you use Kali Linux is the best. It has all the tools. Okay. I'm going to go one by one. Let's see now. The first machine, you see here, you see the ports are open. Wow, 445. That's the port for one I ran somewhere. But I'll tell you, don't be scared. All the four port is open by default if you're using Windows operating systems because you've got a share file. That's what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is on my one. This is Zeus for Atom. Let me hold that for you. Okay, you can see now. Now, as you can see, wow, all my ports are open. Port A is open. Yeah, port A is open. You see? But one thing when you're a hacker or a cybersecurity analyst, you must you try to hack the database to use a password. That's what's important. So, you can see my SQL is open. That's the database port 3. So, I can see and map that. Okay, machine, this port is open. So, the next, now I found and map port is open. So, I'm going to do one thing is I need to get more details on my particular IP. So I'm going to use another command. Map. Okay, command on my IP. And that's why I'm going to target my machine. Now, when I did NMAP without parameters, I did on the range of IPs. But now I'm going to do specific on Zeus for Atom. Okay, let me see what happens. So I put minus A. Now, minus A. Minus A. They want to see what versions you're using. It's very, very important to see the versions of the operating system you're using. That at the ransomware when they want the versions because ransomware came in the beginning is because of the operating system if you're using Windows XP. So it'll take a bit of time to scan. So XP, Windows 7, did you did patch. Upon Windows 8 and 10, that, that is automatically patched. You do automatically updates and you buy official software. Let's see what happens now. So Nmap minus A, we'll go through one by one. Okay, you can see from the ports, all right? Port A is that server open. Now in this one, I'm using Apache and I'm using Ubuntu. Now in Apache 2.47. Now you need the version as hackers. When you get this, you can Google it and you can find the loop in the operating system. 
that I'm going to go to my MySQL, which the default port is 306. Now, when I did nmap minus a, I found that while this port is open, they not block it. There's nothing to there's nothing to detect it. It's open, so that's a chance for me to play some fun and do some hacking. Okay, I found nmap. I found nmap minus a on my particular IP, which ports are open and which versions are open. Like, for example, you can see 445. I'm using Microsoft. You can see I'm using Ubuntu. Okay, but this one, ransomware cannot hack because it's Ubuntu, but I can hack the database because my SL database is open. Okay, so I'm going to do some SQL injection now, which is the same. So first tool was nmap is network discovery. The tool I'm going to use, which is in Kali Linux, is I'm going to do SQL map, which is a SQL injection. Target machine, which is on my chart website. Okay, so the command is SQL map. I mean, all this you will learn when you see SA. So I'm using at worldweb.zforatom.com. Okay, in this, a hacker, you must do high. Offices. You must be able to know that most of the websites uses PHP. So I'm going to do each and PHP and have some fun and try it out. But you can just do zeusatom.com, it will come. So I'm going to do a SQL map and I'm going to see what I'm going to get out of it. So I'm putting a SQL injection to my website. It tells it's connecting. Wow, you see what happens. It shows that, that it's like the back end database, MySQL. Yes, because we found that in NMAP. Do you skip test? Yes, we don't want to. We don't want to do any others. I'm going to skip. We don't want to do that. I want to get my SQL. So I'm going to say yes. No test. Do you want to include all tests for my SQL? Yes, that's what I'm going to hack. So I'm going to get exactly. Let's what happens. No, you put a little injection. You're in. Get parameter and say it's vulnerable. Okay, if you want to keep testing the others? No, it's vulnerable, that's it. We're going to get into it. We're going to find the tables. I'm not going to get so. With the SQL, uh, SQL map minus you, you have to know whether it's vulnerable or not. Yes, it's vulnerable. Now I have my SQL injection. I'm going to say no for this. Now, what I do in the beginning is I'm going to do now a, a command enumerate the database of. Minus, so it's minus minus DBS. Now let's see what happens. You can see in this one, I have available five databases information schema, misconfig, SQL, performance schema. Okay, now I'm going to try to target misconfig and see what it is. I'm going to target one. You can target all at the time, but I'll just do one at the moment to show you. Tables of the database misconfig. So I'm going to do Minus misconfig, which is the database, and cables as well, the command. Now let's see. There's one cable in it by the name of users. Now one cable by the name of users, I want to see how many counts are in How many counts are in that cable of mine? In the table, in the table users, how many counts? So being a CSA plus, being a hacker, you have to be very patient, do step by step. You can see in that table there's four entries. Now, a bit more curious as well, what are the four entries? What do they put in the entries of databases? Name, user, password, or whatever. Let me try. I'm going to do now, I'm going to get a column of entries. See, in the column, the type is, so it shows here in the database. I don't know what they use to use you. They put the first name, ID, last name, password, and username. This is what I want. I mean, uh, when I did this, when I was recently in a hotel in Indonesia, I wanted the name of the hotel. As I said, had to do nothing at night. They get bored. So I was just doing my QL. I got a database of about 400 clients at the hotel, and I gave it to the hotel manager and just told them to be careful, and which is actually good. I got upgraded. So I got two upgrades, but that's what you do as well. You can try it. I won't, I won't ask you to try it, but you have to be very, very good before you do all these things. Now, let me, I got these four tables. Now, I got these five 
cost in this particular table. Now what I do is I'm going to dump and what I got. So the last thing you do is you dump into the database. What is the password, name, first name? Now what I made in my VM, but use these injections one by one, which you will learn in CSA Plus, how to protect, which you block, why you block the port. That's what hackers do. They do NMAP, the standard networks, and they do the SQL injection. So these are the two things you get. So where you get all the databases or anything you want. I mean, this is where uh, the hacker get database and they sell to all these credit card companies that keeps on coming guys. I mean, I get a lot of calls. So I think one of those things as well. The next I'm going to show you now, apart this, so NMAP, you've got SQL injection. I'm showing you this slide. Now, in the slide, if you look, I'm going to put my mouse here. So this is the IP of mine, which I hacked. I was using Ubuntu in my, in my, in my uh, uh, SQL my database, my operating system. And I, I'll show you, like, in the background, I have uh, IDS intrusion detection system or IPS intrusion prevention system called Snort or Bro running. So okay, I'm going to show you, I'm not going to show you Bro, it's already running behind, but what I did, I used a free open source tool called Logalize. I get to my, uh, to my IDS. So I'm going to show you my Logalize right now that I hacked the MySQL. So as CSA Plus, you have to look at the log files and see what people are doing at the moment. I'm going to show you the Logalize which is an open source tool which you can really learn when you if you trust localize now I have config this to my uh, to my IDS uh, it's not you can use a CM I'll show you later that takes a lot of resources, that's why I didn't use it. It'll, it'll slow down my computer. You need a lot of resources, a lot of memory for that to work. Okay, so any questions, guys, please shout. You can just sit, and I'll try to answer you at the end. It takes a lot. So far, everything is working well. Great. Okay. Now, my log, this is what a CSA plus for cybersecurity analysis. You've got to be there to see the log files. So I'm going to use my snort, my IDS. So traffic comes to my IDS and IPS. So I'm going to see, I'm going to go in the log files of it at the moment. Here is written here 9th of June, the time now. We are one and a half hour ahead of India. So I'll show you right now, you can see here, I'll double click on that. See an alert that somebody was trying to come and hack in the SQL. Me here, you see, the, you see the graph here on the file? I was doing all the hacking right now. If you are a cybersecurity analyst and you look at the log file, you will know something is happening and then you block it. What is that? Nobody ever sits down and look at the log files. This is what you need to do as a cybersecurity analyst. And shows there is, there is a firewall, it will alert you. But if you don't sit down there and look, or you don't have an alert system telling you, people can attack. So the tools I've shown you, Snort Bro works in the background, log sees the log files, and scans the network. SQL map is where you can do your particular SQL injections and do all your necessary, get all the database of any servers you want to go into. Okay, for labs now. now. Just want to, uh, I'll go through a little bit on my slides before I get on the tools that we're using. Now, learn for Team Leeds University and college as well, so please get yourself trained for um, your CSA Plus, and then you'll become certified like me. By the way, that's my name in chat. In content, you can ask this university, these are people who write contents for they are partners, they are content partners of CompTIA. Now let's on to the real fun, which is ransomware. So there is one part in CSA Plus called Cyber Incident Response. 
it's all a response team, you know, SOS response teams which you need things as well. So what the first thing you do, event and incident. Security incident includes one or more security events, but not every security event is a security incident. Okay. So when happens, what happens? I want to use CM. What CM? Anybody knows what CM? And CM is I'll sit down. We're here. It's instant and event management. This is also being taught in CSA Plus. It's like a platform, like I showed you, Logalize. But CM, it shows you everything. As I said, it needs a lot of resources. If you have a very strong superpower computer, uh, probably might be 30 over megs of RAM, minus 64 bit. That can use. So you need it. So what, what does CM does? Rule, dashboard, reports, notifications all the time. So these are basics of instant response plan that you have. The first you got, are you prepared? Can you detect and analyze? What have you detect? Can you contain it? Do you have to review and update and response plan? This will need to have an ISO certified company or whatever. Even if actually it's it's a no project management plan, but nobody ever does. Are you prepared? The preparation you need. You need a notification process. You need that when you're hacked, what's your containment policy? Who do the incident handling? What's your recovering plan? And you have backup. That's why they have cloud, because backup, how many of you do backup? And from where came, the first thing they did was they deleted the volume shadow copy. I'll show you that later. So, the showcase of WannaCry is going to come in a few minutes. So, we get a lot of denial of service attacks in the government website here in Thailand. When anything happens, GDS, census codes, malicious codes, are be careful. We download any torrents, you know. Free, free is nice, but there's some harm in free as well. Nobody gives anything for free without reason, so be careful. And proper users as well. And as the analysis, you've got to see your device logs, system logs, here you view the event view logs. I'll show you about ransomware, why it doesn't show as well, applicant logs, etc. Now, what happens when you're hacked? Keep calm, it's bleeding, don't worry about it. You're hacked, what can you do? Lives on. But the first thing you do, you have a quarantine area. You must isolate your machine immediately from all the network. Once you're hacked, take it off. If you don't have to pull up the network, take the scissors and cut the network door. Or watch this, if you're using wireless, they do and just disable your Wi Fi port. You do the infected machines, you do clean up, service restoration, backup, etc. It's just the process. After that, yes, you must have a post instant review, run, which I'm sure not many people write, and then instant response plan. Now, let me just showcase on my ransomware one more time. And how would you be able to prevent it? If anybody hasn't prevented, warning, I'll probably share the slides with team these universities so you can take it and try that at home. It's okay. What I was developed from an eternal blue tool. It's an open source tool. You can search it out. I was developed it. It's exploited and spread via SMB. What SMB? Simple messaging block that. Windows operating system uses to share files. I advise you to block. So when they happen, a lot of people disable the SMB services. You don't have to disable it. Some people in the organizations in block TCP port 444. You don't have to block it. As long as you patch your operating systems, don't get people scared. That's the way just block everything. No, when you do that, there's a lot of consequences at all because files are shared are spoken via TCP 445. About the, the funny thing about this ransomware was it was showed in the Windows event log at all. It, it's, a, it's, it's a malware, it's a ransomware, it comes into your computer without you even knowing it, but it's shown in your firewall. Uh, if you have a, if, if you have a, uh, etc., IPS it shows, but not in the Windows event log. It affected. I won't say 240, I'll show you now it's about 500,000 plus machines at the moment. And I think a lot of them are from India as well. I'll show it to you later. 
So funny, I couldn't find any uh, a, a website of India. If you have any, you can update it for Team University. These are the places that have been affected, most of them, okay, in the world. I have Thailand here because to protect my country, but I'll show it to you later in the next slide. It affected Thailand in a 191. This is written in Thai. Wine one is a police call when you call for emergencies. Now, they were using all Windows XP. All the machines were gone because automatic. So they had a real problem. 191 didn't work for two weeks. So then, it happened same to Green Thailand. Green Thailand is like an online gaming platform. It affected a lot of people, a lot of gamers. Was taught to also plays on it. She was scared. All her points, all her... Little bees that she buys all went away. Blue channel, et cetera, less affected in Thailand. But now we have actually contained a lot. This is Danic. You got one across. You buy and you got one across. It does show in all that. It only shows in Windows operating systems. We made this up. So please have a garden look at this video, okay? They won't show to this. So if you want to cry, what happens? So the separation, what's the first thing to do? The incident is prevent risk assessment host. You have vanish training, get C plus, get people, network security you have, what is a firewall, etc. Detail analysis. Incident with Windows event log. No, no way. It doesn't ransomware doesn't show nothing in the Windows event log. You want even Find a trace of it, but how do you find? It's a yes, it only spreads via SMB only. So, what happens is this guy here, he's uh, one of the good guys, one of the good guys. So, what he's going to do is he's going to send a ransomware by via TCP port 445. In your organizations, you'll have an IPS. Okay, IPS, I use Bros. I'm sure everybody has and firewall, and then to the victim server. What happens is, nobody looks at the log file of the IPS and the firewall. Once it's in, it gets in. For a cybersecurity analyst, and you just analyze the log files of IPS, you would find an alert. When you attack one of what happens? The attack vectors are it via the simple messaging block of the operating system, which is enabled by default in Windows operating systems. Don't shut down. I'll show you how to patch it. The side extent that you should know is, you know that if you're a cybersecurity analyst and everybody is coming on ports 445 from the internet, you know that there's something happening and you should block it immediately. So when the ransomware attacks your machine, one thing it does is it deletes your, it, it deletes your backup, your volume shadow copy, so you cannot print. It's very smart, this ransomware. It automatically goes in, deletes your volume shadow copy, which is Automatically, if you have the latest Windows operating systems, it does have a small window have a copy unless you have enabled it. So logs, if you have in the enterprise, it will show. You see here, a lot of people coming on. See, there's a lot of this. This is a This is a real life event. The thing, one of my companies, one of the companies that I look at the log files at, and I just sort them out. See, a lot of people. A lot of four files who are attacking at the same time from, from this particular key. This is the wall log at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. 445. A lot of attackers were attacking. So what I have an alert system in my IPS that I in my mobile phone, and I go immediately and just shut it down. Block that port 44. Lucky saved it. The first what you do, you see here in IPS log, it shows SMB. You see here it's blocked. I then SMB malicious code were coming a lot from this same particular IP, and I found it was from Russia at that particular time. How do you? So I said ping NS lookup. On you know exactly where it's from or who is. You can go to who is. You'll find country of origin, everything like that. Who is? You for details of where the hackers come from. The Windows event log shows absolutely nothing. You see, nothing. You can't see by the Windows event log. It only is the IPS. That's one thing. That's one thing about ransomware. This, this guy from Russia was trying to attack me. 
In this, I blocked immediately, but this one I accepted. So the first thing, the enemy malicious code came. What I did, I blocked all the 36 IPs. I isolated it. On the machine got affected. Yes, it did get affected. What do you do when you have a one and crime? You isolate the machine from the network. Cut it out. Pull out hand cable. If you're in Wi-Fi, just cut it out. Don't reboot. Please. You think if anything you'll restart, it'll go away. It won't go away. It'll be there. But once you restart, it will go through your network and affect everything. Do not reboot. You use there's a tool called WannaKiwi. Okay, you have ransomware, you can still use your computers, you know, but it'll just encrypt all your word PDF. So whatever you can use. You can go try to search this tool called WannaKiwi. So what's the way that it's an encryption? Crypto, uh, cryptography, so it sends a key. It's like two keys. You need a symmetric key and asymmetric key to be able to encode it. So what does one key do? It's an open source. Sometimes it finds, sometimes it doesn't find. It will find a key that the ransomware put in. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Because one key has used in the old ransomware called CryptoLocker. Actually, did work pretty well. So you can use this search one key. Try to the tools if you're in ransomware and see sometimes it will find, sometimes it will not find. So it's better than nothing. And have it, if you your files back, the best way is to ransom by Bitcoins. And one day, I don't know whether they're going to give it to you or not, you just do uh, read them. I found out from my friends so far in Thailand that 70% do get there, but 30% they just don't answer. So it's a jigsaw thing. You know, all those incidents learn from these then standard operating procedures, and then you prevent it automatically. Now, this as well. How do you prevent one cry? Okay, I'm going to show you one by one. So you patch your operating systems with MS17. So, so, what I would advise you to do is see where's my web? Let me open one second. You just search MS17 my So just type MS17 in Google, it'll come to this page. Now, it's passed since March 14, but nobody ever took it seriously. Security updates critical. See, Microsoft said it's critical, but nobody can. Okay, see, it had used the real operating system, the Windows XP, no more have updates. I'm not talking about Windows 7 because I, I use just Windows 10. But in Windows 10, you've got a patch. Let me show you how. So MS17017, you search. MS critical update. How do you find your version? So what I would do is can run. Type win version. version. My Windows version is 1607. You can see on my mouse here, 1607. You don't have to see the build. You don't know that you can. So 1607, I, I, I do again, guys. Then, then we are, okay, W I N Vin You see when I my is Windows 10 1607. So I search down there from Vista 2000. Even your servers you got to patch it. Okay, it's all here. Windows 32 bit. Mine is 64 bit. You know how to find your bits of your operating systems, right? Minus 64 bit operating system. Okay, you can find minus 64 bit operating system and minus version 1607. So go down, search on Windows 10, this is 8.1. Uh, let me guess. Yeah, okay, Windows, now this is out. 1511, yeah, see? Minus this one, Windows version 1607, 64 bit base. So I'm going to click on this. everything and install them one by one uh, and start every time you install that you got to do version is here you dimensional one seven get that's very easy 
need to do. Okay, that's the first thing you do. The second thing I would advise you what to do is very simple. The control panel of your operating systems. The noise, hopefully you're using original Windows and it is activated. Make sure activated. That's number one. Number two, I would advise you to do is go to your all settings of your Windows, look at updates and security. Make, I'm not going to I'm not going to click. It's going to take time. See update history, updated everything, and up to the latest patch every time. Uh, in uh, the old operating systems, you can go to MS01, uh, 1010, and you get all the details. This is what you should do. And then now, read it. You've done it. I advise you to please do it because the other malware that will attack Windows operating systems, if you do this, it will get totally because that's they're attacking your PC. They're attacking the operating system. Okay. One is disable SMB version one. SMB version one. Go and search it if you're using Windows XP. If using XP and 2003, disable version 2 and 3 as well. Very easy. Go to Google, SM version 1. It will show you how. It might even give you a batch file. You can click on it, but you can even search and do it automatically. SM version 1. I won't show it to you now. It takes a lot of time. That's, but you don't have to disable the B in Windows 10 if you patch it. Okay, but if you're using Windows XP and Windows Server 2003, which I don't think there's more support, my advice is to please do disable it. And must is to please upgrade your service and operating system as well. A TCP 445, not recommended. You don't have to block, don't panic. You patch it, you're done. This is what I did in Thai. I'll try to translate it to uh, uh, English and I'll probably send it to Team Lee's University. I've, I've done that and given it out all three to the people in Thailand to do it. So you see for them to, to, to understand. But there's still other ransomware there, guys. It's not that enough. But then you want to cry, no. There's ransomware that come in at the moment. It's called, some will call it UIWix or UIWix. What is UIWix? Again, this, or this attacks your machine if you're mining Bitcoins. Some will use Windows operating system with graphic cards to mine Bitcoin, which is not a way because I'm a miner myself. It eats a lot of electricity. You should go to Bitmain, buy the machine, and do it in, in worth it. So if you do if you have an operating system, no operating systems, and you are mining bitcoins, what Wix does is that it enters the system and steals away your bitcoins immediately, which is stored in your files and your operating systems because what you're doing in all, yes, when you do your own Bitcoin mining and operating systems, you make very small, might not even a Bitcoin, but now one Bitcoin is about three thousand dollars, which is a lot of money. So that's make the money. So be careful, there's more ransomware coming. Again, this one attack the Windows operating system, so be careful. So now, now live hacks at the moment on WannaCry. You guys can go to this website called httpsintel.malwaretech.com. Again, I advise you, make sure you've got a firewall, antivirus, everything in place. Make HTTPS. Let me try. A moment. So, I try to disable the, the ports of blocking. I'm going to show you a live map at the moment. I'm going to connect. You see here with all one crit, all one crit. You can see Indian green at the moment. Wow. In Thailand, still a lot. India, I don't know which state this is in, but it looks like India, yes. And South, I'll explain to you about South India. This is happening right now. You can see here China. So fast at the right now, even in the US, South America. Europe, look at this at the moment, right now. Black. Here. So 500. 27,000 machines that are offline are affected. 1,690 that are online are affected. This has been affected at the moment, the past 46 seconds. But I should like map right now. There's one thing I want to do is, 
if a lot in Thailand right now, and even in India, I'll tell you what, Salaki. Now, Salaki is, uh, it's somewhere, it's like a bug, okay? Now, it's not a wanna cry, it's land somewhere, but in India, you might come a lot because you guys use a lot of bit tournaments, you want to bit Indian movies, you want to bit free songs, yeah, and you do, you get some extras as well. well even in Thailand, everybody does bit, yeah, Salaki is there, so what happens is, have they put in key loggers, they want to just see uh, your habits, or some people just do it to sell the information to credit card companies, etc. So a lot of this happening at the moment. In fact, if you ask me, I think it's more than one cry, but it's, it doesn't, for a ransom, it just stays there and does an APT and sees your habits. And that's happening right now. India, there's a lot. Thailand, there's a lot. Me, I use a lot of uh, bitcoins, but I would advise you, if you want to guys to use bitcoins, don't use the same PC. Buy one. Uh, you only need to download, buy a cheap one, you can even buy uh, old Intel and you do BitTorrent, but don't do it with the same machine. But once you download a bit, a logger is there, we will use you. Okay. Again, Intel malware, let me show you a life map at the moment again. Check, it depends whether you're blocked it or not. You can see at the moment, one happening at the moment right now. This, this one, this one is doing sality, a lot of sality in the state. I'm good in the geographic locations of India. That's happening at the moment, even in Thailand. But Thailand is not a lot now because people have come. See, Thailand much of one grip. No, no one grip at all. It's contained, luckily, but it's more on sality. Back to my screen. Now, before I, the universities. Now, that's, that's the end of my uh, ransomware fund and a CSA plus fund. Before I end and take more questions, if you need any, you have any further information or you need any other details, please do contact Team Lee Skills University. More information on that. The email is there or you can even call them on plus nine one nine triple one three double one eight zero and the teamleastraining.com. Gentlemen, pleasure having you here. I thought to give you some more information next time if there's opportunity on probably some blockchain technology which is coming, FinTech which is coming very, very strong, what will happen with Team Digital University in the future. So I'm uh, stop sharing my screen at the moment and I'm going to go through the Q&A. Anybody from Team Leeds University you want to take over now? I'm going to say something? Okay. Okay, should I I'll stop sharing my screen now? And I want to okay, I can see anybody wants to ask uh, some questions or anything? Any questions at the moment? Um, where's the chat box? Okay, there's a chat box. I found the chat box. Answering this on my screen. Okay. Uh, I agree. All right. Anybody have any questions? If you don't have questions today, you could be. Okay. Watch well, a couple of people there. Questions. You can contact Team Skills University or I mean the regional directors of Comte in India. So, uh, I'll wait for two more minutes. If any questions, you can just type it down. And just email it to Team Lee's, and I can always give you some answers there in the future as well. I hear you. Will you be sharing this presentation? Well, uh, yes, definitely. I will uh, share it with Team Lee Skills University. Uh, Skills University, yes, you can have a look and try it out. And. Uh, but then that part in Thai language, so I'll try to translate that and give it to you in the very near future, okay? Okay, thank you. So, form and start Windows uh, operating system. Try to see what's happening at the moment. And um, um, do the necessary patching and updates, and then you'll be free of WannaCry, you'll be free of ransomware. Another way to attack, not from the operating system. 
uh, if we wish to contact you in future regarding some issue or any such thing, you you could do so via you do so via Team Lead Skills University because I'm in different geographic locations. I'm in Thailand at the moment, but uh, you could probably contact Team Skills University, and I'm sure they'll be able to pass it to the uh, director and probably to me as well. Guys, we take the training of CSA Plus. It's very, very important. And many of you here are in the young teenage. You want to go and work in the U.S. or anywhere in the world. I think cybersecurity analyst. That's what you need to do. You need guys. You need to be an accountant for security people. Just watch the log file. It's a good job, but it pays well. Does anybody from Team Lee's um, University would like to end this call? Or end it? And since, um, since, okay, he's there. So anyway, so thank you much, ladies and gentlemen. Have an evening, and I'm sure that we'll be having some more of these webinars in the very, very near future. Thank you. Namaste. Swadikap. Thank you. Thank you.